Iceland is the land of fire and ice. To me, it's also the land of fantasy. For much of the magic of epic fantasy comes from the writings of the 13th century Icelandic chieftain, Snorri Sturluson. I first heard The Hobbit read aloud when I was four. I discovered The Lord of the Rings when I was 13. Through my college years, Tolkien was my favorite author, in spite of the scorn that such a confession brought down on an English major at an American university in the late 1970s, when fantasy literature was derided as escapist. Then I took a course in comparative mythology. To learn about the gods of Scandinavia, we read the Edda by Snorri Sturluson. On page 41 of the English translation, I began recognizing names. Biffer, Baffer, Bomber, Nori, Ori, Owen, and Gandalf. What was Tolkien's wizard doing in medieval Iceland? I read Tolkien's biography and discovered his love of Icelandic literature. I began reading the sagas, first in translation, then in Old Norse. I went to Iceland, and like so many other writers before me, traveled by horseback through the wind-riven wilderness to the last homely house. In Iceland, I learned that all the stories we know of the Vikings' pagan religion, the Norse myths of Valhalla and the Valkyries, of elves and dwarves and dragons, of one-eyed Odin and the Well of Wisdom, of red-bearded Thor and his hammer of might, of two-faced Loki and the death of beautiful Baldr, the rainbow bridge, the eight-legged horse Sleipnir, the ash tree Yggdrasil, the world-wrapping Midgard serpent, Ragnarok, or the twilight of the gods. All the stories we know of the gods we still honor with the names Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. For all of these stories, Snorri Sturluson is our main and sometimes our only source. He is the most influential writer of the Middle Ages. Because of Snorri's wizardry with words, the gods and heroes of the Vikings live on, and our modern culture is enriched by Northern fantasy.